Let's see what we got in here. Most Americans can choose where they want to work, but a select group of athletes have their new home chosen for them. In most cases, when an outstanding athlete is drafted by a professional team, it's off to a new city. For a young man in his early 20s, this can be a lot to handle. On top of relocating, the young athlete has to negotiate a contract, manage his new money, and adjust to a drastically different lifestyle. Now, some handle it better than others. We spoke about these changes last week with Marcus Wilson, a sixth-round draft pick of the Los Angeles Raiders, whose off-the-field progress will be following throughout the year. Joining us this week is Gerard Mustaf of Maryland, the first-round pick of the New York Knicks in the NBA draft. And like Marcus Wilson, Gerard will be the Sports Business Rookie of the Year. With Gerard is his agent, Bill Strickland of ProServe. Bill also represents other NBA players like Purvis Ellison and Jeff Malone. Welcome to you both. Bill, I'll start with you. How did you get interested in Gerard? other than the fact that he was very familiar to you as a basketball player in the D.C. area. Well, that's essentially it. Uh, we're located in the Washington, D.C. area, and we watch all of the local games, obviously, and uh, was familiar with Gerard, in fact, uh, as far back as the high school days because he attended uh, DeMatha High School there. It's a very fine and prominent school in basketball. And watched his progress, anticipating that uh, at, at some point he'd be leaving the University of Maryland and uh, obviously turning pro. Let's go to draft day, Gerard, and, and ask you where you were at the time and what your feelings were as the picks came down to number 17 and you heard your name mentioned. Well, I was home in Greenbelt and brought my family. I went in the bedroom and I'm um, lying down in the bed and all of a sudden I heard all this noise and everybody was screaming. And he said, New York Knicks has just picked at number 17. And um, it was a great feeling. Everybody rushed inside to the bedroom, congratulated me. It it's really hard to believe that you just lay down in bed while this was going on. This was your future. That, that sounds like somebody who's really very comfortable. Uh, is, is that a way to describe you? I think I'm a very level-headed person. And um, I had a headache the whole night, Wednesday night. And um, I decided to go in there and go in by myself and lie down and relax and, and wait for my name to get called. And that's what I did. What about the Knicks? Going to a team in New York, a big market where if you become a star, and I'm sure you're hoping about that, you could uh, become a very rich star. There are always those extra things that you can do in the market. Have you thought about that too? Yes, I have. I believe there's a very strong media market there and hopefully I can go up there and do well in New York and, um, and make myself very financially secure. It's also what they call a media circus. There's going to be a lot of attention based on you being the number one draft pick as a Nick rookie. You feel there's a certain pressure on you to exceed what people might expect? I don't believe the expectations are very high for me coming in here because um, as a sophomore coming from the University of Maryland, I'm not sure too many people have heard about me or know about me. So hopefully the expectations won't be as high. So hopefully I can just go in there and, and play above expectations and do as well as I can. Bill, when Gerard said that he was going to come out after his sophomore year as a 20-year-old, you must have also known that the Knicks had a general manager situation which Al Bianchi was going to be extended or perhaps not extended at all. When he got his one-year contract, I believe the day before the draft, did that make you believe that they would pass over Gerard? No, not really. Uh, you know, when you have someone of Gerard's talent and size, uh, it's, he has to be a consideration for any team that's drafting. Uh, we had had hopes prior to the draft that the New York Knicks would seriously consider him and he had been up prior to the draft to visit the club. I felt Bianchi's situation, whether he was going to be here or not, would have just a marginal bearing on whether or not they in fact select him because the Knicks need talent on that team and need young talent and Gerard exemplifies that. Let's not make him blush, but what type of person is he? I, I have been pleasantly surprised. Uh, I, like a number of people, second-guessed his decision prior to the draft and uh, his, in that I, I'm of the position that um, I feel young men should finish school. And when he made his decision and I met him and he made it very clear it was his decision, he wasn't looking back, I started respecting that decision. And having to, um, gone through the process of getting to know him and seeing some of the choices he's made already about lifestyle, it, it's given me an indication that he's, he's mature. And I, I think it's going to work out well here. Speaking of lifestyle, Gerard, you are now going to be living in probably in the New York City area, unless you want to commute a couple of hours each day, which I suppose you won't be doing. But there's also going to be a difference in your lifestyle because of money. How are you going to be putting your salary to use, and is Bill going to have a lot to do with that? 
I think they will help me out a whole lot. I think the pro serve is going to help me manage my financial situation, my money, and um, I'm going to allowance myself. I've been in college for two years, and I've never, I never had um, $50 a week at the most. So um, it's going to be an adjustment for me, but I think they'll be helping Mr. Strickland that I can get by. A lot of players, when they do come into money, buy uh, houses for their parents, cars. Some some people buy jewelry. Uh, what what do you think will be your first major purchase? Probably renting a house, renting a place to stay would probably be my first venture. I'm not looking forward to doing a whole lot, but um, as soon as possible, I think I'm going to take my time and fit in well and try to get in, adapt to the situation in New York, socially, athletically, and um. Just didn't get involved first. Well, you're in the area right now in New York, and uh, you sort of surprised me when you came in just for this show, and we appreciate that, that you're not going to talk to the Knicks today. When do you expect to talk to them? Uh, camp doesn't uh, start for a little while, but you don't have all that much time. Well, I think we have sufficient time. Uh, obviously, the salary cap figures are going to be announced August 1. I think you're going to see a flurry of activity after that time. Uh, there will be some preliminary discussions, and... Uh, we can move it along, but the, the team has to know what kind of money they're going to have to work with for next season. And so I, I think you're going to see um, some waiting until the salary cap is announced. If they're going to announce on August 1st, of course, you have to wait for Derek Coleman. Some people will be, will be waiting for Derek Coleman. Does it hinge upon what he makes that you can figure out where number one is going and what market they're playing in? You're playing in the same market as Derek Coleman. Well, yes and no. Part of my, my job right now is to start putting together my homework and evaluating what uh, number 17 will mean in terms of dollars. Uh, uh, Derek being the top boat, if you will, in a, in a high tide, all boats will rise. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if the kind of money that he gets at number one will reflect in terms of percentage change the kind of money Gerard would be entitled to at number 17. But we will not necessarily have to wait on Derek to get it done. Uh, I have a good sense of what's fair and reasonable for the 17th pick uh, right now. Well, uh, let me ask Gerard that question. What do you think is fair and reasonable for you to be making in your first year as a rookie? I don't have any idea, to tell you the truth. Bill, do you have an idea? I have an idea, and I'm not going to say. Right. It puts you at a disadvantage when you're talking to Mr. Bianchi and the Madison Square Garden. But I will ask you this. The fact is that Bill has already uh, uh, represented Purvis Ellison, who I believe was number one in exactly. the draft a couple of years ago. Did that influence you in going with Bill, that he knows exactly what a number one should make and perhaps what a number seven?